Okay, this is the January 2022 P2 paper. It's question nine. Um, if you look at it, you can see this is an integration question. We're going to be finding the area uh, under a curve or the area between two lines, depending on your methods for using it. Uh, let's have a look at it. So it says figure two shows a curve. Let's start writing on the diagram. A curve with y equals x minus x squared. And we've got a line up here y equals mx and it says these two lines intersect at the origin and at the point p and this is what it wants for part a it wants me to find point p the coordinates not just the x value sometimes it's just the x value isn't it, on these questions but no they want us to find the coordinates of p in terms of m well that's relatively straightforward so let's get started and do that so for part a what i'm doing is i'll simply be saying uh, they meet where the two lines are equal. So they meet where, what have we got? Mx equals x minus x squared. So when we're looking at this, then we already know, or we should already know what we're going to get from this. We're going to get a quadratic equation. We're going to try and factorise that quadratic equation. But we do already know that one of the answers is naught naught. So that should really help me when I'm trying to do this. Uh, let's actually tidy this up. So I've got x squared plus mx minus x equals 0. Um, let's just look at that second and third term and call those uh, x m minus 1 equals 0. And here, trying to factorise this, and it, again, really, really important, I suppose, They've told me the naught naught. So if they've told me the naught naught, when I'm trying to factorise this, I don't need to use anything too complicated. I can take x out of both of these two terms. So if I take x out of both of those two terms, I'll be left with x plus m minus 1 equals naught. So I'm either going to get x equals naught, which we knew already. That's my x equals naught, y equals naught, 1, or x equals 1 minus m. And if x equals 1 minus m, I need to work out what the y value is. So y is going to be, just use mx, y is going to be mx, so y is going to be m1 minus m, or m minus m squared if I want to write it out in full there. So I've now got the coordinates of p, because I'm not interested in that one, that's where it hits the origin. The coordinates of p then, p is... 1 minus m, m minus m squared. So for part A, can you find that in terms of P? Yeah, I'm quite happy that I've done that. Okay, second part says, the region R shown in the figure is bounded by C and L. Work out the area of the region R1. Okay, right. well, first of all, we've just found that that value there the x part of it, the x coordinate is 1 minus m. So if I want to do anything about finding the area of that r1, I'm probably going to integrate between 0 and 1 minus m. What am I going to do to do this? Well, I'll show you two different methods, but I'm only going to do one of them. What you could do is just find that area there by integrating y equals x minus x squared between 0 and 1 minus m to work out the area under the curve. And then you could have taken away this area here, which you could either do as integrating y equals mx, or you might be able to do it as the area of a triangle, because it is the area of a triangle. That would be one method for working out the area, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to say is that if I consider a typical length there for this one, that's always going to work out to be y1, as in the coordinates of that one, minus y2, the coordinates of that one. So, sorry, the y, the y value of that one. So what I'm going to do, let's do it down here, let's actually show you what I'm doing rather than keep saying what I'm going to do. If I want to work out the region r1, I'm going to say it's the integral between 0 and 1 minus m of y1 minus y2 and the benefit of doing it my way, both 
relatively good ways of doing it, is that I will only need to integrate once here. So what I've got is the integral of one minus m naught. Y one minus y two. Well, y one was the x minus x squared, and y two was minus mx. So I'm going to integrate that. Now you could integrate it straight away. What I want to do really is to combine those two just into one term. I've got x and minus mx, so I'm going to call that x one minus m minus x squared. You don't necessarily have to do that. If that's confusing you, then just, just do a slightly longer version of what I'm going to do here. But now, I'm going to start integrating. Um, this is a constant. The 1 minus m is just a constant. So if I'm integrating, I'm going to get x squared over 2. 1 minus m. And I'm going to get x cubed over 3. Hopefully we're happy that the integral is add 1 onto the power and divide by the new power. So I've now got to evaluate that between my, um, 1 minus m and 0. And so it's just going to be sticking 1 minus m in for x, which will give me 1 minus m squared over 2, 1 minus m, minus 1 minus m cubed over 3. That's doing that bit. Minus, you don't really need to put this in, but I always just check, just in case, this actually is just 0 minus 0. There's no issues with that one there. A good idea to get yourself into a habit of doing that, because sometimes they'll be sneaking, they'll use cos or sine, and you'll get a value coming out for one of those things. But here, no, absolutely not. And actually, this is really neat as well, because of the way that I did that first bit. I've got 1 minus m all cubed over 2, minus 1 minus m all cubed over 3, and at our standard now, especially as we know what the answer is, that is the answer. Okay, a half take away a third is a sixth. So I've just got a sixth of one minus m cubed over six there. So a nice little neat bit right at the end. Um, part C, let's go back and see what part C says. So part C says, um, Given that R1 is equal to R2, okay, so up here, these two are now going to be the same as each other. Yeah. Um, find the exact value of M. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, I can think of a quick way of doing that then. What I need to do is I'm going to work out the area of all of this bit now because the area of all of that is just the integral underneath that curve. So if I can find out a value for that, I'll then be able to substitute in the fact that we've got that being half of it, and it should be fairly quick. Probably gonna be easier for me to show you rather than to do it quite abstract like that. So what I do need to do, first of all, is to just make clear what that value there is gonna be. Well, we've got the graph here, x minus x squared. Let's do it slowly. Let's show the examiner. Um, if y, oops, if y equals x minus x squared, when does that equal to naught at x? One minus x equals naught. So that's x equals naught and x equals one. A little bit overkill there, I think, but just to show you, that value there is one. So as I said, I'm now just gonna integrate x minus x squared between naught and one. I'm gonna get that value there. So let's do that first of all. Um, if I'm showing the examiner, I'd probably say that that's the area of R1 plus R2. So area R1 plus R2 is just going to be the integral between 0 and 1 now of x minus x squared dx. And let's get a value for that. So let's not take too long over. That's not difficult. So integrating that is x squared over 2. Integrating that is x cubed over 3. We're doing that between 1 and 0. So that works out to be a half minus a third minus nothing minus nothing. Just slow the video down if I'm going a bit too quick here. That works out to be equal to a sixth. And so what we now know is one minus m cubed over six, our original one, double that is equal to a sixth. Okay, so that must be equal to 
a 12. Just make sure that that's clear to everybody. Okay, we know that the whole area here is a sixth, which means that that area there is a 12th, and that area there is a 12th, but both of those are given by one minus m cubed over six. Right, it's just a question of um, rearranging all this now. That should be one minus m all cubed, by the way. Just one minus m all cubed over that. What's that? Okay, so uh, yeah, let's just solve that one minus m cubed is equal to six over 12, is equal to a half. So one minus m is gonna be cube root of a half. So m is gonna be one minus cube root of a half. Let's just go back and check and see what the question said. Did it say anything about exact values or decimal places? Yeah, exact value, exact value, so I will leave it like that, won't try and do anything uh, more fancy than that because that's already enough work for this one. Right, hopefully that makes sense.